So hi guys, I welcome you to this series called RBI 24/7. Guys, my name is Mansi Anand and I'm your mentor for this series and in this series we are going to discuss a case which you guys have been telling me since a long time and you wanted me to take it up and now we are going to study about it and the case is the Harshad Mehta scam popularly known as the big bull right so guys since this is a special session there are no uh, there are going to be no questions and we are just going to, to discuss about this scam right so i hope you are ready for it so shall we start so before starting ahead with the session i would like to ask you guys to subscribe to our channel so guys if you are visiting our channel for the very first time and this is the first video you are watching then do not forget to hit the subscribe button it can help you to stay in touch with us and this bell icon you can see here it can help you to get notified whenever a new video by us comes up right okay you can also join our telegram group on this group you can post all your doubts and queries and we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible right so starting with the session i hope the screen is perfectly vis visible to you okay so this is a scam this is i think the pro uh, this is probably the uh, oldest the uh, first scam in indian history which garnered so much of popularity among people and it actually shook the indian economy and it it came up when stock market was not in its current form but stock market was you can say it was in its infant form right so let us learn something about it so it was a fraud of about 4000 crore Just a second. Okay. So it was a fraud of about four thousand crore. If you index it now, it would become twenty four thousand crore. So if we try to uh, measure this value in current times, it would be about twenty four thousand crore. So you can imagine the extent of impact it had, right? So as it so popularly, it came to be known as security scam or the Harshad Mehta scam. one of the biggest frauds perpetrated on indian stock market systemic fraud that involved bank receipts and stamp papers don't worry we are going to discuss about them after that it eventually led stock market to crash but i think this is one thing which is common to every scam which is common to every type of crisis the stock market it ends up crashing right and the valuations they they come falling down This scam shook the country and ultimately changed the rules of the dollar, right? So, first of all, before starting with the scam, so it is not, uh, it 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 is not very complex scam. It's I think relatively an easier one since we have earlier discussed about the global financial crisis and after that we have discussed about the eurozone crisis. I think comparatively, you are going to find it easier, right? So first of all, let us know something about Harshad Mehta. Harshad Mehta belonged to a very, uh, very normal family or a very humble family. He didn't come from a very strong economic background. So born as Harshad Shant Shantilal Mehta in 1954 to a lower middle class Gujarati family. Spent his childhood in Kandivali, Mumbai. His father ran a small business. So as I told you, not. Uh, didn't come from a very uh, a very prosperous family so family had to shift to raipur in chatisgarh for medical reasons he completed his school his schooling in chatisgarh and after that came to mumbai alone after completing the school in search of employment here he completed his graduation and took up odd jobs like selling hosiery to sorting diamonds for the next 8 Years, so eight years he struggled before making a mark in the stock market, right? So a little introduction about the man. So after that journey to the top. So after struggling for eight years, he landed up as a sales person at the New India Assurance Company. So it is a popular company which provides insurance to people, right? so he landed up as a sales person there and here he got interested in what uh, made him popular the stock market here he got to learn about the stock market how it worked how it can impact the economy right 
following which after that he quit his job and joined a brokerage firm in 1981 to learn more about stock market and by year 1990 he had risen from rags to riches and had become a prominent name in indian stock market so at this brokerage firm he worked very hard he made his mark he established contacts he made network right and in a, a span of about 10 years he became a big name in indian stock market right okay so now i think first we have to know about the economic backdrop in that time because we cannot compare today's scam with this uh, with this debacle that is because the economy was different the situation the rules and regulations were different so if you saw here we are talking about the pre lpg period or pre liberalization privatization and globalization period when indian economy was not much open it was restricted and businesses they do they didn't have much freedom right so regulators have a had a strong hold over banking system over the stock market and stock market was in was in its infant form it was uh, it was you can say it was uh, it was just getting established that time right okay so that time india had two very different but parallel markets and operation so the first market we are going to talk about here is the corporate securities market that is the stock exchange where private company securities or corporate securities were dealt the shares and uh, the bonds were sold and purchased here at the stock market belonging to the private sector here the required rate of return on funds was much higher after that the other market was for government securities now see the trade how it used to happen in government securities so these so the, the trade of uh, government securities it was dominated by interbank market basically see banks as if guys if you remember when we talked about uh, statutory liquidity ratio in one session we talked about how it is the ratio that banks have to invest in liquid assets so whatever deposit whatever uh, money a bank has it has to deposit a certain percentage of it into liquid assets that we usually call as slr or statutory liquidity ratio i think we most of us are familiar with it but the point is slr used to be really high in this time in this pre lpg time slr used to be really high that means banks they did not have much lending capacity because most of the uh, most of the money was uh, most of the money had to be invested into safer assets or liquid assets right that is why the lending capacity was not much and since lending capacity was not much even profits were not high right and many smaller banks they struggled to maintain this slr so they had to borrow from bigger banks so what they used to do was some smaller banks who were not able to maintain liquid assets uh, which were required they used to borrow it from the larger banks so there was an interbank market that is buyers and sellers in this market were usually banks which were trading with each other right so this is the other market one for corporates corporate securities and other for uh, government securities now when they used to borrow from each other government securities were used as collateral so this was the market for government securities and see there had to be brokers see if there are two banks let's say there are two banks called sbi and bob although these are big banks let's say they want to borrow from each other they cannot do it on their own they need a broker for that so guys once again we are talking about not talking about the current times so at that time there had to be a broker to carry out this inter bank market trade so these brokers had to be licensed by rbi right so i hope now you are clear with it two markets so the point here is in one market this was the uh, the entry was not easy into corporate securities market and the rate of return was much higher but here in the other market or uh, belonging to government securities the rate of return or the yields were much lower 
right and see the capacity was huge because uh, because like uh, most of the money not most but yes a major chunk of banks deposits went into slr that is why this was a huge untapped market because the money was being put into safer assets that is why it was a untapped market uh, which was huge in size as compared to the first market corporate securities market and the yields were low because there was not much demand right those yields were low and so this was an untapped market which were which was actually waiting for someone to come and exploit it and that someone became harshad mehta so existence of these two parallel markets and the differences between them created ripe opportunities for arbitrage so what is arbitrage in simple terms whenever we have two different markets and there is a commodity which is priced differently in these two markets then you buy from the market where it is priced less and you sell into a market where it is priced higher that is arbitrage or taking benefit exploiting differences prices between two markets is known as arbitrage so two different markets with different yields with different amount of capital into them untapped capital so this created opportunities for arbitrage right moving ahead okay next now coming to ready forward deals and bank receipts so i just told you about interbank transfers that the weaker banks or the banks having lesser amount of safe securities of slr securities they had to borrow from the larger banks so you can see here economy was much more controlled than it is today mandatory for the banks to invest threshold a particular limit amount in government securities smaller banks struggled to do this guys see the difference is not slr slr is present today slr was present then but the only difference is the the limit of slr you can say you can say that slr back at that time was almost double of what it is now right so uh, you can imagine the difference in the lending capacity of banks right so smaller banks struggled to do this needed to buy securities from banks that had securities there surplus right so they needed to buy securities from bank they that had securities in surplus and here comes ready forward deal with a solution so these were a deal these were deals of very short term loans that one bank would avail from the other against bank securities so you can imagine it as repo transaction so you know what a repo transaction is when a commercial bank it borrows from rbi and gives collateral in form of government securities basically the commercial bank is selling to rbi the government securities for a very short duration and after that it pays back the money it has borrowed and takes the collateral or buys the government securities back similar is the process here ready forward deal a kind of loan availing facility where short term loans were provided from one bank to another bank right so one bank providing loan to other bank against government securities as collateral after that a br was issued by borrowing bank that would promise the lending bank about delivering the money at the time at the termination period of 15 days so let's say there are two banks there is bank 1 and bank 2 right now this bank 1 it needs to borrow from bank 2 right so bank 2 is going to give money to bank 1 now bank 1 needs to give some collateral to bank 2 in form of government securities but see government that, that it is not a physical asset that you can just take and submit to the other party right so instead a br or bank receipt was submitted by bank 1 to bank 2 this br means this br is a symbol for securities you can say that right so bank 2 is giving money to bank 1 or lending money to bank 1 and bank 1 is giving bank 2 the br or bank receipts right so as collateral 
late so bank 2 has this br which signifies that it has to take payment from b1 b bank 1 after some time right so i hope this mechanism is clear to you brokers also worked here between different bank now the point to note here is that this transaction sometimes happened when one party didn't even know the other party because there was the presence of a broker in between right so sometimes bank 1 doesn't even know that is that whether it is borrowing from bank 2 bank 3 bank 4 does not know that uh, who the other party is because he is availing this loan through a broker that means bank 1 is giving br to broker and this broker is transferring br to bank 2 and in return taking money from bank 2 and giving it to bank 1 right so this is the mechanism that works out with the presence of broker the bank the counter parties sometimes don't even know each other right so this is the role of broker so i hope now you understand this mechanism and the meaning of ready forward deals and bank receipts right so this is ready forward deals right moving ahead now banks desperation for profits as i just told you that banks in india were struggling to make profits because first of all their lending capacity was not high they were not in, uh, permitted to invest in riskier assets they had to put a major chunk into safer securities and apart from that new products new financial products were coming up people were taking interest in stock market and they were not putting so much of their money into banks so banks were worried about deposits getting into other investment modes so competing products were present offering better returns to investors that is why their interest dwindled to put their money into banks right thus driving business away from the banks and banks in india were struggling to make substantial profits now harshal mehta saw all this scene and saw an opportunity right so here what he did was he tried to exploit this dire need of banks to make money or to make profits because obviously there was profit making pressure on banks but the capacity was not much right so harshal mehta along with his brother so i told you by 1990s he had made a mark um uh, of his name into indian stock market established a firm along with his brother called gromo research and asset management and became a broker and he tried to uh, exploit or capitalize on this opportunity right so earlier he used to work as a broker broker between two banks as we just learn about bank 1 and bank 2 taking br from one bank giving it to another and taking money from the other and giving it to the first one so this was being done through a broker right so now what he thought was he thought what if some banks were willing to issue fake brs or brs against which they do not have any security so guys i just told you that if bank 1 is borrowing from bank 2 and providing br to bank 2 in return this br signifies that bank 1 is having liquid securities right bank 1 is having liquid securities against this br or bank 1 has that much of securities that if bank 2 wants money back this bank 1 can sell securities liquid securities and give the money back to bank 2 right so these bank receipts they were secured by slr at their back now harsha thought what if some banks were willing to issue brs whether or not they had securities to back it right so see if there are securities backing it that means bank 2 ki payment maregi nahi ya bank 2 would be able to get the money back because of by selling the securities backing it but if, what if there are no securities then if bank 1 or the borrower does not pay the lender cannot do anything right so he thought of it he thought of the scheme so took a deep dig in the process of bank receipts contacted two banks to issue fake brs bank of karad and the metropolitan cooperative bank who were in dire need of profit they agreed 
right? And fake BRs are bank receipts did not have the backing of any bank security, right? I hope you are clear with it, right? So basically, now what he got into taking fake BRs from bank, these two banks, and taking money for from other banks in return, right? So here it is. You can say that bank one is this bank of Karad or Metropolitan Bank, and bank two are other bank. So he is taking money from here and giving it to here and taking money in return. But the point here is bank one. They are not getting this money. This money is being diverted to the broker because obviously the broker holds it for the time it is executed right or the for the time the deal is complete right so the money he took or diverted and put it into stock market and started a bull run with it bull run simply means he kept on buying and buying the securities which raised the price of securities right now obviously when this short duration loan so this was a short duration loan when this short duration loan ended bank 2 is going to demand the money back right bank and what he did was whenever a bank demanded the money back obviously since he had put so much money into stock market and he has he had made the prices rise he used to sell some of the securities raise money and give it to the lending bank and in this process this this bank who issued this br got some commission or got some incentive that is why they agreed to issue fake brs right but this process was working on really smoothly and guys do take it in consideration that there were not two banks in real so here we are talking about two banks one lending and borrowing but in actuality there were a nexus or there was a network of banks so he just keep kept on moving money from one bank to another and whichever bank demanded the money back or the duration of the loan ended he used to sell securities in the stock market raise money from there and paid to the demanding bank right and later again uh, got a fake br in in, in return for it uh, got some money put it into stock market and then again started one more bull run right so this become a, this became a whole process and the stock market was growing and growing because of this see he was not a small investor he was a he was a huge investor and the money he used to raise was also huge right that is why once if he invested into a security the retail borrowers followed right so i have told you many times the effect of whale trading or such huge investors who can turn the market right so you can say that harshal mehta was one such big investor um, uh, the badi machli of market who can turn the pay, who can turn the direction of the market so if he invested into a security the other smaller borrowers uh, sorry the other smaller investors the uh, they also used to buy that share right moving ahead so finally by continuing this process he uh, he kept on moving ahead on the journey to become the big bull as he was called he was called by many names the big bull because he he didn't allow the markets to fall so what do you used to think was that markets should rise and they have the capacity to fund the financial needs of the entire country if we kept on Uh, if we kept on putting money into stock market and if we didn't allow it to fall but the point is markets need to be corrected anyhow right you cannot just put money into it it will uh, it will it would ultimately result into creation of a bubble right so created a maze without letting anyone realize maze of banks right funds that he borrowed were using using this fake brs were put into stock market to create a bull run so his favorite stock was the acc company associated cement companies apollo tires hero honda tata and many new many more so acc was one of his favorite pumped so much money into its shares aggressively that its stock rose from 200 a share you can see here 200 a share to 9000 a share in 3 years making a profit of making a rise of 4400% right so this is this is basically a dream and in real life no company can grow this much to have this much rise in their stock in their stock price 
right so he kept putting money into such companies and the companies were happy because obviously their share prices were rising it was easier for them to raise money because of harshad was so basically they were contacting harshad to put money because they knew if he did so many other investors followed this suit right so everything going well now uh, harshad making money having the, and see he was never shy of uh, showing off his wealth buying luxury cars the cars which were which were not even affordable by the richest in the countries and buying uh, buying expensive properties right so obviously this role raised eyebrows later that whether this much of money making was possible or not right after that in 1992 the big bull got exposed by journalist sucheta dalal ripped off his dubious activities by exposing him in an article so there was a journalist called sucheta dalal who went on to investigate that how is this happening how is this person making so much of money and why is he being called the amitabh bachchan of bombay stock exchange right so in the article she described how exactly mehta had extracted 500 crore from sbi's treasuries so a huge amount 500 crore compared to that time right after the article was published news busted like a volcano spread panic across the market so guys we have talked about it many times that how stock market works on expectations now see this article did nothing till now everything was going fine everything was going great harshad was able to manage this nexus of banks borrowing money from one bank giving it to another and pumping into stock market but as as soon as the article got published sucheta dalal's article article it created erupted a wall it led to eruption of a volcano and it spread panic so nothing changed but only there was one news that changed the entire course of events banks became clueless clueless obviously the spread panic and worry in the market so the lending banks they kept demanding their money back so till now if any bank demanded their money back harshad used to sell the securities and pay that uh, pay that bank back because obviously the prices were rising he was making huge profits but the change here was the stock market began falling after the after this article became public so banks became clueless demanding their money which resulted in drastic downfall of sensex january it was 4467 point suddenly crash to half almost trained more than 1 lakh crore from the money market and those who trusted mehta lost their savings of life because till now they were making money following harshad but the companies in which small borrowers small investors or retail investors had, had invested their share prices came crashing down here you can see so in this article you can see the impact of the news so everything going fine share market rising at a huge at, at a very fast pace and then it came crashing down after 92 right you can see the fall the drastic fall right and now at the end after that cbi charged mehta with 72 criminal cases 600 civil action suits i think this is something that you can read on your own nothing much uh, explanation required here 72 criminal cases 600 civil action suits uh, by banks and institutions who were pertaining monies that he owed to them alongside rbi appointed a joint committee parliamentary committee called the janaki raman committee to provide a comprehensive picture of the uh, the uh, of this scam in september 1999 bombay high court high court awarded 5 years rigorous imprisonment to mehta and three others in the maruti udyog limited case so the uh, different cases so you can see uh, 72 criminal and 600 civil suits were filed against him right so one of the case was maruti case in which he got a punishment of 5 years imprisonment of 5 years right so this was the and after that he secured bail in all cases including including this one but was arrested again in 2001 for misappropriating some more funds missing shares of 90 blue chip companies but this time he didn't get the bail and on 31st december 2001 at the age of 41 47 he passed away in tihar jail after a heart attack 
so this was the story of the book big bull uh, harshad mehta who didn't allow the markets to come down who didn't allow correction to be done in market i think this shows us how important it is for markets to correct themselves to place prices on the fundamentals of companies rather than just what the market or what the investor expects right so i hope guys you learned something new from this session and if you did then do not forget to give us a thumbs up because i am going to be back in next session with some some more, some more information that can be of use to you and till then you take care of your health keep your studies going on and i'll see you in the next session thank you for being here